design of a digital integrated circuit starts with the circuit schematic. This provides the topology of the network that implements the logic. Layout design or physical design is the next step in this process. It is a problem of translating the circuit schematic into a set of pattern layers that form the integrated circuit or integrated structure in a silicon substrate and all the electrical properties will be established in the phase of physical design. However, physical design is an elaborate and costly process and that's why intermediate functional verification through the FPGA prototyping or emulation is done and it provides another opportunity for testing the design closer to the final circuit. In the past 20 to 25 years, the world has not only seen the rapid reduction in the feature size of the transistors from uh, 1 micrometer or 1000 nanometers to somewhere around 7 or 5 nanometer in the latest technology, but also the dramatic innovation of sophisticated physical design automation tools. The reason why I'm focusing on the physical design automation tools is because most of the designs today are so complex. Almost all the steps in the physical design happens completely automatically. The design engineer's job is to aid the automation tools in order to perform these tasks and check the quality and many other verification things. The complexity of today's ASIC physical design requires a mix of background in electrical engineering, computer science and IC processes. So in this video we are going to discuss about the entire flow of physical design which is also called as the back end of the IC design process. As I said earlier, VLSI physical design is a process of translating the circuit schematic which is represented in the form of gate level netlist into the silicon physical layout which is finally represented in the form of GDS2, the graphic database system. The first step in physical design flow is the design initialization. The design initialization means several things. Number one, there are several inputs that are needed for the physical design such as dot lib files which are logical libraries and dot left which is physical library dot tf technology uh, file and the netlist which is generated from the front end also the design constraints in the form of sdc from the front end itself and several other inputs i have a video on the pd inputs uh, i'll keep the link in the description we can watch that for more information with all these inputs the de design initialization is done also the design initialization means there will be an environment created for each project in which the designer has to work where all the tools and required environmental variables are set so in order to start the design the user needs to go to that environment so this is about design initialization. The next step is basically the system partitioning. The system partitioning is a step where the design is partitioned into convenient components of functional blocks. This is about the full chip we are talking about. The entire full chip or SOC will be divided into convenient components. But this step is kind of very rare uh, in the physical design flow because it would be often done at the phase of architectural design which is the earlier phase of the design itself uh, and the front end designs are prepared uh, according to uh, such blocks itself right but the interconnections of these blocks and as well as the pin assignments and many other information will be done at this stage the next stage is basically the floor planning and the power planning floor planning is the step where the positions of the partitioned blocks are planned and the blocks are arranged accordingly. Now this is at the full chip level where the each big big blocks are uh, positioned in their uh, places according to whether they are talking to IO. If they are talking to IO we need to place them close by to IO. If they are if two blocks are talking to each other or communicating with a lot of interconnects then they have to be uh, close to each other so with those uh, rules we need to play, uh, place them accordingly but at the block level implementation there are two levels of implementation which can be a chip level and the block level itself right so in block level implementation what happens is the macros or the big ips which we are 
taking from some other vendor we need to place them in uh, wherever they are uh, supposed to be placed whether they are to, uh, placed uh, uh, nearby ios or uh, at the corners usually they are placed at the corners and their pins supposed to face towards the core region standard cells are not placed in the floor planning in only the macros and the io pads and many other cells are placed in the floor planning stage and the power planning also happens at this floor planning stage because this will be integrated at the same stage in the industry there will be a separate team for power planning itself uh, rather than the pd himself doing it different types of power delivery networks will be analyzed and which is suitable for the, the present project that will be used but the floor planning may have to be carried out several times iteratively to yield the best results that means it, it is not that we have done it com uh, we have completed it and it's done not only at the block level it may change at the full chip level as well and next is the placement and the optimization usually the flow plan and the power plan and the placement and optimization all these steps and the following steps which i am yet to show all those things are done with the electronic design automation tools in the placement stage the selected components from the asic library are placed in the position on the silicon floor when we say silicon floor it's the placement row itself now there are different stages in placement uh, to be precise there will be a course placement that happens based on the wire length so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to minimize the wire length the the tool will try to minimize the wire length and place in such a way that the wire length is minimized this is in order to meet the timing and reduce resistance during course placement the tool will not recognize the the standard cell rows where it has to sit properly in the detailed placement it will take care of all that it will take care of the site where it has to sit properly it will do legalization that's called legalization and several other optimizations also will be done such as placing buffers and other related stuff and once the placement and optimization happens then the clock tree synthesis will happen you may ask me this question why clock tree synthesis happens after the placement the answer is this that the clock tree should know where the cells are sitting right if the if it doesn't know the where the cells are sitting how can it generate a clock so that it will reach the pin uh, pins of the standard cells so in this clock tree synthesis different types of clock trees are designed depending on whether the chip is for the mobile computation such as uh, our laptops and pcs at home or whether it's for high performance computing systems such as servers where power is not a big issue they use different types of uh, clock tree designs there are different types of designs such as h tree x tree and also using different kind of meshes so all these things will be done and also the optimization in its path whenever the wire length is too long then a buffers or inverters are also inserted the next step is basically the routing and optimization this is the final step where the connection between the standard cells and the standard cells and the macros will happen so the connections will happen at different metal layers so if the tool is not able to do some connection we need to make some space in order to uh, completely route them once the routing and optimization is done then we go for dummy cell or metal and oxide fill so this dummy fill insertion happens basically because of the reason that during chemical mechanical planarization which is polishing of the wafer there the density of the chip is very important if it is not proper then the wafer may undergo mechanical stress in only some region and that will impact the manufacturing of the chip itself so the transistors and metals will not be uh, manufactured properly so the fabrication this is the requirement from the fabrication that it needs to have the uniform density in order to achieve that we will do this dummy cell dummy metal and dummy oxide fill and the next step is basically the rc extraction so with the routing that has been completely done we will carry out the resistance and capacitance extraction the resistance and capacitance values from the routed metals will be extracted and this entire flow from the design initialization to rc extraction is actually called uh, the place and route stage even though it says place and route but this entire flow will be included in uh, pnr stage 
also at each stages like placement and optimization and after clock tree synthesis and after routing a static timing analysis will be carried out these will not be accurate because the rc extraction rc data is not ready yet but still some kind of estimation will happen by the pnr tool in order to analyze the timing so that uh, if it is completely bad there will be some reason for that so we can go back and check oh, what's the problem if it is acceptable enough we can move forward to the next stage because each of these stages will take hours or sometimes days to complete so in order to make sure that we will not see a huge change at the end of the uh, cycle we will check the timing at each stage even though it's not accurate but once the rc extraction is done then the real static timing analysis can happen and that happens in a sign off tool such as prime time the pnr stage happens in a tool such as uh, synopsis icc2 which is ic compiler 2 or cadences innovus and many other tools are available but those are very famous ones and rc extraction usually happens through star rc from synopsis in static timing analysis basically we will check whether the timing has been met setup and hold timing violations are whether completely zero or whether there are some violations it should be completely zero if the timing goals are not met then the design will be sent back with some changes in the floor planning or placement uh, has to happen and then again the timing analysis should be done until and unless it is clean we cannot go forward once it is clean uh, the timing sign off will be carried out in a sign off tool as i said earlier it is in the prime time where all the corners uh, will be taken into consideration even the noise corners will be taken into consideration parallel to timing analysis there will be another flow which is physical verification will be happening and there will be a uh, engineer for physical verification usually in the industry there will be an engineer for static timing analysis uh, who is called an xst expert uh, and for physical verification there will be a person the physical verification is the step where the drc which are the design rule checks which comes from the foundry basically there will be a book which will be given from the foundry or the vendor where all the design rules will be mentioned such as minimum length of the metal and the spacing between the minimum spacing between the metals all this information will be available in the drc tens of thousands of uh, uh, rules will be there so we need to meet all those rules in order to manufacture our chips properly also there will be lvs which is layout was a schematic we need to make sure that our layout is implementing the same function as that of the schematic necklace which is given so that comparison has to happen that also happens at this stage and also antenna violations and other uh, issues will be checked i have a video on antenna violation please go through it uh, to get more information and if there are some changes required because of this physical verification has some issues those will be sent again back to the uh, pnr stage need to make changes in uh, in those things and uh, make sure that the timing hasn't been changed also in parallel with these two the sta and the physical verification noise and reliability uh, also will be checked such as em which is electro migration issue the ir drop and several other issues i have a video on this em ir also please go through my uh, video i will keep all the videos in the description box for more details right again if there is a change which is needed at this stage also it will be sent as a eco which is called engineering change order so all these steps will be giving uh, ecos to the pnr stage where engineer change where engineering change order means that we need some changes in the actual layout so implement those things very few small changes and give back the design right so again these three things will happen if all of them meet simultaneously then we can conclude that our timing has been met there could be some other uh, checkers as well i have mentioned few of them here emir right so with all this clean the final layout data will be sent in terms of gds to format to the foundry for manufacturing for physical verification there are some tools which are used such as um, caliber from mentographics or ic validator from synopsis and from multiple other vendors 
for noise and reliability uh, red hawk from ansys or many other tools can be used i hope you got clear understanding of the physical design flow if you have any question or if you want me to make another video of on any of these specific topics you can mention that in the comment box so i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and bye bye